Yes, thanks everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, how to maximize your QuickBooks to accelerate accounting processes and eliminate data entry. My name is Nicole Schmeida. I'm the marketing specialist here at Docuer and I'll be moderating today's session. We do have a couple polls for you sprinkled throughout, so I'll come back on to uh, moderate those. The main, uh, the session will be uh, presented mainly today by David Anchando. He's a regional sales director here at Docuer. Um, the webinar is being recorded, so later today we'll email you a copy of the recording, the slides, and some handouts, which you can actually download now if you go to the handout section of your GoToWebinar panel. On the right, you can see today's agenda. So for the first few minutes, David will cover how does Docker make your accounting processes faster? Then he'll go right into a live demo so you can see those solutions working together in action. And at the end, we'll open it up for some Q&A. So if you have some questions as we go along, definitely put them in the question box now, and we'll get to them uh, when we get to Q&A towards the end. So with that now, I will pass it off to David here. So let me do that. There you go. Okay. Um, thank you again, everyone, for attending. Um, my name is David Anchando, and First of all, I am going to turn off my camera. Um, I think I lost the screen share. There it is. I'm going to turn off my camera so that things run more efficiently. We all know how some of these remote meetings go. Um, but today, we're so let me start by about who I am. So I'm the regional sales director, like Nicole said, out of Southern California. Um, so I manage the SoCal market, the Nevada market, as well as the Hawaii market for DocuWare. Um, I have been working in the document management space now for over 16 years, you know, in various capacities. And I do have firsthand experience in developing paperless and, and content management strategies for companies basically of all sizes and in all marketplaces. Um, so as we go through the webinar today, you know, think about the following. You know, how, are, how do invoices move in your organization? Are there any points of redundant data entry? Can you see where things are in the process as you're, as you're doing these different things with invoices? And are there challenges with finding related documents to these invoices? And are you operating as efficiently as possible in terms of these document process? So that brings us to today's topic, which is eliminating paper, data entry, and human error. Essentially, it's the automation of your entire invoice process. That's what we really want to achieve by walking through this today. And again, as we go through it, please feel free to ask questions and give us feedback and so on and so forth. So we all, so here's, here's what Docker World looks like at a glance. Um, it's important to note that this system gives you ease of use without compromising any feature functionality. And that's a big deal. There's a lot of systems out there that give you one or the other, but very few systems give you both. And that's what Docker specializes in. And here's a snapshot of both the browser-based client as well as the Docker mobile client. So again, all of the things we're talking about today can be full featured in the browser in either a desktop or a laptop or even a mobile device when it comes to processing your invoices. So build on your so build on your current setup. You know you trust QuickBooks. You know how to use it. It has over eight million users around the world, all relying on it every day. So you trust it. You know how to use it, and you rely on it to track not just your finances, but it tracks all of the data that comes off of these documents. So it is your system of record, and it's something that you know well. So let's take a let's take the next step and think about how DocuWare can help integrate with either QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop. There's a lot of different flavors and versions out in the market right now. The thing you keep in mind is no matter what version you're using, we can find a way to take information out of QuickBooks as well as get information into QuickBooks. So maybe you're on the line today and you don't use QuickBooks, but thanks for joining and we'll be integrating a very similar approach to this. So go ahead, Nicole. Hand yep. it off. All right. to you. So we have a poll question here for you all that I'm going to launch. So let's, let me launch it now. So you should see it on your screen. It's, um, how do you feel about your current QuickBooks usage? Don't use it, use a different program. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it does its job fine, but could do more. You're interested in a more advanced integration um, or you have, you know, you love it, you heavily rely on it. So you're kind of here checking out what Docker can add on top of that. 
So just wait until we have um, about 75% um, of votes coming in here, and then I will share the results. So it looks like we got a good amount of responses coming in here. All right, if you haven't answered the poll yet, um, take a second to just <clears throat> pick one of those options there. All right, looks like we got a good amount here. So I will close the poll now, share the results. So um, it looks like, you know, a good amount of people are interested in a more advanced integration, um, or, you know, it works fine for you, but it could do more. Um, and then we also have people on the line that aren't necessarily using quick they use a different solution, but similar concepts apply, um, you know, integrating Docker with other accounting software. So, um, yeah, all right, everyone. Thanks. Uh, thanks for participating in our first poll question. And with that, now I will uh, go back to the PowerPoint slide. There you go, awesome. David. Awesome. Thanks again. So, one second. Let me click. Okay. There we go. Okay, so here, here we're outlining three very common issues and how we solve them in document. For example, disorganized files and wasting time filing and searching, um, slow approval processes. And this is especially evident now that we have, you know, remote workforces as well as hybrid workforces. And then the process of manually entering data into QuickBooks. And for those of us who are visual learners, this is kind of a graphical representation of that. Um, so notice the, the data, this is a really interesting slide. So notice the data entry efficiency improvements of 95% at the beginning of the process, and then the overall efficiency gains of 70 to 80%. Again, we're talking about real metrics here. We're not talking about made up numbers. These are things that have actually been captured and we've shown evidence of. Um, so, you know, the reason why we're talking here is especially powerful because we do have the ability to automate just about everything that you're doing when it comes to invoices. Now, there is a tool on our website that you can use to input your own details to see how much money you can potentially save per month. Here's just one example. So the savings is calculated based on several industry studies. And let us, let us know if you want this link, and we will gladly send it to you as well. So now we're going to go into the live QuickBooks demo so that you can see it in action. And again, as we're going through this, feel free to put your questions into the chat window. So just give me one moment here to share my screen. Okay, so what you're seeing on the screen is DocuWare. Now keep in mind, everything that we're showing you here today can be used within the QuickBooks world or basically any other application that you're running. Um, so although we do work a lot in the QuickBooks space, we also work with other line of business applications as well. And for those of you who haven't seen DocuWare, this is the user interface. Uh, we made the statement earlier that, that DocuWare gives you a lot of functionality without sacrificing ease of use. And that's exactly what we're showing on the screen right now. Um, so for example, on the left-hand side over here, we have what's called a document tray. And a document tray is essentially a staging area for documents. So it's a place for documents to sit while you're figuring out what to do with them. It's much like that inbox that you have on your desk where somebody puts documents into it. This is the virtual version of that. So somebody might hand you some documents, you might staple them, you might unstaple them, you might hand them to somebody in the office, or you might just go and file them into a filing cabinet. Or in a lot of cases in today's world, you might just scan them to a folder on the network. So this is essentially a prep area that allows you to do that. So I'm giving a quick background on the system and all of this will make more sense in a couple of minutes. Um, so for example, if you highlight a couple of pages in this inbox, you can right clip, you can staple them together. If the documents are different formats, you can clip them together. So this allows you to manage your documents and prepare them intelligently before storing them inside of the system. And then over here on the right is the document viewer. So this is where when you click on an item on the left, it shows up over here on the right. On the top of the screen, we have a bunch of different items. So for example, we have the ability to search on documents, we have task lists, which are workflows, 
We have folders that we can store documents in. Then we have e-forms as well inside of DocuWare. So let's go back to QuickBooks and show you how we integrate at a high level when it comes to capturing documents coming into DocuWare. So for example, within QuickBooks Online, I have a purchase order. The first step of any AP process will be one to log into QuickBooks. Just give me one second. Okay, so like I was mentioning, the beginning of any AP process begins with the creation of a purchase order. Essentially, you wanna buy something. So this is what the QuickBooks screen looks like. The nice thing about QuickBooks and DocuWare um, from an integration standpoint is all you have to do to capture this document into DocuWare is print it. So what do I mean by that? When I push the print button, it brings up screens where I can select my printer that I wanna print from. In this case, it'll be a DocuWare print. Now the key here is we're actually printing this document as a PDF into DocuWare. And when I do that, it's automatically capturing the information off the document so that you can store it into the content management system. So a couple of things are gonna happen when I push print. One, it's gonna take that job, and like I mentioned, it's gonna store it in DocuWare, but we can also simultaneously do other tasks along with that. Common tasks that we'll see is you wanna redirect it to a printer at the point that you're doing the virtual print, Another task will be you might want to email this to your vendor so that you can, you can get products from them. So at the time that it's storing the document, it'll actually launch an email with the attachment with some basic information about what you're trying to do. So you can redirect that to the appropriate vendor and you can do things with that document. So that's step number one. Now notice when we go back to DocuWare, if I go to my list, you see an open purchase order right here that just showed up. So this is actually that purchase order that I just printed. So it printed directly into DocuWare. It also showed up on a list for an open PO so that you can quickly view and see what's going on uh, with these documents that are in process. Um, so for example, a list is basically just a compound search. We're just doing a status search based upon the status of that PO being open. And that's how it shows up in that list. Um, everything that we are showing you here is completely configurable meaning if out of the box, we can do anything that you like, and it comes with a lot of things pre-built for you, so we can make this very simple. Um, so that's step number one, getting the PO in. The second step in, in this accounting process is a document will show up with the goods that were shipped to you. Usually it's done on a loading line. So the way that process looks is can actually, we're gonna move this inbox over here. So what happens now is you actually get that document, you receive it, and nine times out of 10, you're actually gonna scan it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this packing slip that just showed up and drag it into my scanner. And what's happening with that scanner is it's either direct, directly connected to DocuWare or it is connected to my inbox um, through a hot folder and I can actually see that document come into the system. Now notice what happened when this document showed up into my accounting tray. Basically what it did is it auto indexed that document. So we notice the color coding as well. If it's green, it means we've seen that document type before, we know what it is. If it's red, it means there might be a value we didn't pick up or that maybe that value wasn't on the page. And if it's yellow, it means we have a question on a value. So this one actually looks pretty good because the values that are red aren't actually on that document. So now when I store this as a packing slip into DocuWare, it's gonna take that document and store it into that filing cabinet. So I'm gonna quickly index it. Sorry about that. And when you store it, it's now stores fully indexed into the document management system. So again, we're taking these documents and we're quickly capturing information off of them so that you don't have to do redundant data entry when it comes to sending this information to QuickBooks, which we'll show you what that process looks like in a couple of minutes. So the last part of any process um, involving accounting invoices is the receipt of the actual invoice. Nine times out of 10, that is done via email. So I'm gonna open up my Outlook and notice here that the email did show up in my inbox. One of the nice things about DocuWare is not only can you just quickly index this document, which I'm gonna do right here, but it's actually gonna store the email alongside with this, with this invoice inside of DocuWare. Um, the reason for that is a lot of times this particular email message is also a record. So we want to make sure we clip that to the document so that when you search on the, the actual invoice, you're able to see what showed up with it as well from a correspondence standpoint. So when I push store now in the DocuWare, 
that's going to take this invoice and that email message and store it back into that document tray. Now, other things that are worth mentioning as well from the Outlook client is when you hit quick search, you can also have searches stage right here. For example, when this invoice comes in, I can say, oh yeah, there is an open purchase order right here in that list that we showed you earlier that relates to that invoice that just came in. So you notice now that the invoice actually showed up in my inbox and it properly indexed itself. And, but notice this as well. So right here, I have the page one of one with the document that I'm looking at. But if I go over here, it'll take me to the second document in that batch, which is the actual email message. So again, we're storing both of these items in their native formats and they're clipped together in a batch inside a document. But that becomes important is let's say you want to respond to that email. All you have to do inside of DocuWare is push edit and it'll launch your mail client with that email message in it. And you can now uh, respond to that email or treat that email as an email message right from DocuWare as well. So you get a ton of flexibility with that. Um, other common things that we see, and this is relevant at any point, whether you're storing something in DocuWare or you're searching for something, is you have the ability to put annotations on the document as well. So if you wanted to highlight a piece of the message that was important to you, you want to put text boxes on it, whatever you want, DocuWare has the tools embedded in the browser to make it completely paperless when it comes to processing these documents. So back to the indexing piece. So clearly, I want to index this now as an invoice into DocuWare. All of my index information checks out. I push store, and it's now going to store that as a um, electronic invoice inside of DocuWare. So again, very simple, very straightforward stuff. Um, you'll notice that a task just popped up in my taskbar up here. Um, so what happened when this invoice was submitted is the DocuWare workflow engine, again, which is fully configurable, Based upon what I do with my documents, it knew what fields to read and what decisions to make and how to route the document. So that's where that task got assigned. So now when I go to my task list and I look at what's waiting for me to do, and I click on the document, the rule set that applied to this document basically said, when a document comes in, if it has a three-way match, meaning there's a matching purchase order and packing list, I now put it to the last stage of the process, which is the GL code it, and submit it so that we can export that data to QuickBooks. So if I want to check and make sure that everything looks the way it's supposed to look from my three-way match right here in the center of the screen, I click the three-way match piece and it'll show me the matching documents that are related to this. For some reason, it didn't make a packing list, but again, it can be a two-way, it can be a three-way match, it doesn't matter. The system will automatically link those documents together for you. So again, the last step of the process is the GL coded. Now, the nice thing about the new version of DocuWare in version 7.4 is it knows what information comes from this vendor all the time. So it's automatically gonna pre-code it for me. So all I have to do now is get the amount in there. And based upon that amount, it'll now confirm and then send to the last stage of the process, which will be to create that booking record that gets uploaded into QuickBooks or any other line of business application that you might be running. So the document is now processed, and then it's ready for export. You see right here in the list, a number three just popped up. And if I go to my ready for export search, it's going to show me all of the documents that are waiting in a batch so that we can build that export file and then send it directly into QuickBooks. Now, talking through this process, it's taken about 10 to 15 minutes, but imagine being a user and being able to just point and click. When you're pointing and clicking through this process, the total time that it takes is literally less than a minute or two. It's very simple, very straightforward, as opposed to walking things around, emailing them, hoping for responses. Um, any sort of workflow feature you can imagine just needs to be configured in order to enable it inside of your company. Okay. So as I mentioned, the last step of the process is to create that booking record that gets uploaded into DocuWare. So the DocuWare export utility is how that is done. So what happens here is you actually have a utility that's pre-configured, and right now all we're doing with QuickBooks is a data handoff. So there's any number of utilities that you can employ to import that data into QuickBooks. Um, so all we're doing is we're building that file, and one of the things that's kind of nice, and most of our customers actually do this, this will run this export on a schedule so you don't have to do it in an ad hoc fashion. So for example, you could have it run every hour, every six hours, once a day. And then what it'll do is it'll build an export file 
that can be uploaded directly into QuickBooks. Okay. Now, a couple of other items that we did not cover that I want to hit very quickly. One of them is searching. Um, so, for example, um, when you run a search on an invoice or any of the accounting documents, here are all the index information pieces that could captured about that document. You can use any or none or one of these to find a document that you're looking for. One of the more powerful features, aside from searching on the header data about an invoice, is the ability to search on keywords as well. So any value you enter can be filtered by a keyword so that when you run that search, it brings back the individual page that matches that search criteria, but also shows you the keywords that are on that page as well that you might be searching for. Again, very powerful search functionality inside of Document. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to show you is when you're inside of QuickBooks, and you know, we'll go back to this PO screen, um, we do have the ability to pull information off of the QuickBooks screen and then run searches in Document. So, for example, I have a hotkey search set up that says search, upon all, search on all documents that have this order number on it. So when I hit my hotkey combination, it's going to run that search, and then it's going to bring back the result in DocuWare, and there's the documents that have that, that search result on it. Um, so you can create as many of these as you want. You can do a vendor name search. You can do a full text search. So, for example, if I'm bringing up a document and it's got part numbers on it, I can create a full text query, hit a hotkey, and it'll bring back those search results inside of DocuWare as well. And with that piece of it, I'm going to hand it back to Nicole. All right. Well, thanks, David. We're going to go back to um, finish up some PowerPoint slides here. So let me get to that. And then, um, oh, looks like we do have one more poll question here. So I'll launch it right now. So let's see. I just launched it. So, you know, you just saw an introductory demo. What excites you most about, you know, exploring this more, exploring a further Docker and QuickBooks integration? So take a second to pick um, an option that you see on your screen now, and we'll just wait until we have. A good amount of votes and I'll share the results. All right, looks like a lot of people, we got some votes coming in quickly. All right. I think we got a good percentage here. So with that I will close the poll and share the results here. So it looks like a majority are definitely interested in eliminating, you know, data entry, you know, high volumes of that or just redundant data entry. So that's great to see. Uh, of course, you know, improving productivity, getting things done faster. Um, and then, you know, you may not have a quick you know, you may not use QuickBooks, but you have a different software. So you're, you're interested in seeing how Docker can integrate with that. Um, and then, you know, there is the feature of remote document access. So, you know, you saw earlier, DocuWare is able to, you know, you can use it on your computer or, you know, on a phone or a tablet, wherever you are. So that's great. So with that, um, I will go back to the slides here and, Pass it back to you, David, just to wrap this up and I'll come back on. Let me just- Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay, so let's keep the momentum going. Uh, one of the nice things about um, the DocuWare, you know, IP processing or the invoice processing system that we have is we do sell a pre-configured version of it. And technically speaking, we can get it up and running in just a few days. And it includes the automatic indexing. It includes the building of that data export. And it also gives you smart adaptable workflows. So like I mentioned, everything that we showed you is, is configurable inside of the system. Um, you, your ADP, your partner, whoever you're working with, in terms of Docker, can easily get this set up for you. And the idea here is not just business continuity, but it's simplified auditing. And more importantly, on the compliance side, we help mitigate any liability that is associated with documents. So again, it is a very powerful application. It comes completely pre-configured. 
and you can be up and running in as little as three days. So DocuWord as a company, um, we are growing monumentally, especially in this new environment. We currently have over 15,000 customers in 100 plus countries, over 650,000 users of our system, and over 750 certified partners helping us sell and implement our platform. And our certifications. This list is constantly growing. So you can see here when it comes to working with other ERP systems, and we see that there was a lot of interest to see what we do in that space, we do actually interoperate with many applications that are out there. And even if your application is not on this list, feel free to run it by your, um, your salesperson, run it by us, and we'll show you how we can integrate with other platforms, even outside of the QuickBooks world. That's one of the main benefits of DocuWare is we're very agnostic in terms of how we hand off information and take information off of other systems. And I'm going to hand this off to Nicole now for the case study piece of it. All right, thanks, David. Yeah, we just uh, we'll wrap it up, you know, and then we'll start Q and A. So, you know, you saw an introductory demo, you saw a few introductory slides, but there is a case study um, in your handout section that will be included in your email later, where this Rebel Refrigeration Company out of Las Vegas. You know, they need a solution um, for their invoice processing. They used QuickBooks, you know, once they implemented it. Now anyone authorized can pull up a PO, an invoice, or job number, see every see all the documents together, um, and going digital, you know, is a game changer for them. So definitely read that case study. It's it's pretty short, um, but a good read. So, you know, kind of to wrap up our main, you know. Main ideas here for you, you know, we want you to save time, we want you to save money, we want you to save, you know, no more headaches, have stress-free, you know, automated workflows and document access, and just to refocus your team on, you know, tasks and projects that, you know, move your company forward. So what's your next move here now that you watch this webinar? We hope you, you know, consider taking the next step, getting in touch with your authorized Docker partner or reaching out to us. So you can explore more of DocuWare, increase productivity, and you know, stay ahead of the competition by using these modern digital tools for your workforce and your customers. We hope you don't stay on path two where you don't take any action and you limit your growth and scalability. So with that now, we will open it up for Q&A. Again, what you saw today was just a taste of DocuWare. If you wanna see more and take the next step, we definitely you know, encourage you to reach out to your Docker partner, um, or you can head to docker.com slash demo to request a more personalized in-depth demo, or email us anytime with any questions at contact.us at docker.com. Um, again, we will email you the recording and slides later today. And at the end of this webinar, uh, please complete the short survey that will pop up. So with that now, uh, we're going to turn our cameras back on and jump into some questions that have come in. So let's see, what do we have here? So first question is, um, is this all available on the cloud version, all the email, email integration and print functionality? Uh, yes, absolutely. It, it, is, it is included in the cloud version. It's all inclusive. Great. Uh, let's see. Can you search on text annotations? Um, I guess kind of going back, like searching keywords. Does that include text annotations as um, well? So, yeah, the quick answer to that is the annotations are put as layers on the document. So in order to make annotations searchable, you will have to flatten the document. And we'd have to reprocess it. So depending upon your process, we can see the best way to do that for you. There's there's different methods to do it, but out of the box, we keep the annotation layer completely separate to preserve the integrity of the document. All right, kind of a sim or a next part to that question was, can you delete annotations after you created them, like undo them? Um, you have the ability to pull the layers off the annotations, so you can. Great. You turn the layers <laughs> off and on, and I think there might even be a click option in the profile to actually delete the annotation. That's something I'd have to check on. But most people, what they do is they leave the annotations there and then you pull the layers off. And then what you see behind the annotations in terms of those layers depends upon your rights in the system. So you know, I guess the bigger question would be, let us know exactly what you want to try to do and we'll architect a solution for you. 
Great, yep. Yeah. Can Docker also build reports using stored invoices? It depends. So because we're stored in the cloud, the availability of the database information, the pull reports is somewhat limited. However, when you run search results and when you run lists and queries, that results list that shows up on the screen, you can export it as information to build reports out of. So the information is available to do it. And it's generally done through searches and exports um, based upon either data that's in our database or information that's in the results on the screen. Great, so um, next question is, would it be possible to do the same with a banking statement as you do an invoice? For example, could all the transactions in a bank, bank statement be captured and sent into QuickBooks? Um, the quick answer to that is we have to see the statements. Um, for us, captures capture. So it all depends on the structure of the document, how easy it is to get information off of them, and then how we structure the fields that you're clicking it into. So. Um, that's a great sidebar discussion. You know, once we see documents and get more information, we'll definitely show you how that can be done. Okay, got it. Um, let's see. So someone is kind of asking, seems like a clarification. Uh, so getting data out of QuickBooks and into DocuWare requires you to print to PDF and then scan into DocuWare? Uh, no, the print of the print the PDF is an automatic capture. So what happens is it's printed as a PDF, and that PDF is sent to a process inside of Docker where it auto indexes and stores it. And you can either forward it to a document tray or you can send it as a fully indexed document into Docker. We've seen it done both ways, but you don't have to print or rescan unless you're doing something with that document that requires you to rescan. Like for example, went to a loading dock and somebody put handwriting on it, then you might have to. But for the majority of the customers, you do not have to print and rescan anything inside of DocuWord. That's one of the points of, of the process where we involve the DocuWord printer. Okay, got it. Uh, let's see, we have, um, is the data bi-directional in QuickBooks since QuickBooks is now in the SQL database? Seems like a technical question then. Um, it is a technical question, and I th so it all depends on what you're trying to do with that data because QuickBooks has export mechanisms, and I would imagine it's a little bit easier to do on the desktop product, um, but when you're going through the cloud, there's different sorts of things you can and can't do. So we can sidebar that one as well, explore the environment, see the best way to achieve moving data back and forth. Got it. Let's see. Um, some people asking again, so... Is the functionality the same for both QuickBooks desktop and online versions? Uh, the functionality is the same in terms of when we're doing that lookup out of QuickBooks, all you have to do is be able to highlight the value on the screen. If you can highlight a value on the screen, you can run a query against it. If for some reason you can't, we can actually put a smart connect button on it too, which might be able to pull that information off the screen. In terms of pushing the data, we're doing a data handoff. So if it's on-premise, there's an import utility that'll pick it up and pull it in. If it's in the cloud, there's certain things you can import. If not, there's other inexpensive and very useful utilities you can use to achieve that data handoff. Got it. All right, let's see. Someone is asking, can you match down to a line level? Uh, that I am not sure we will get back to, but I don't think we can. A lot of it has to do with, with how you capture that line level. I mean, if it's captured as just an independent field, you can link that to everything, but if it's a part of the GL coding, you need to see how we would, if we'd be able to link that. I haven't seen that when I created the relationship rule, so I don't want to say yes unless I've done it, so I'll look into that for you. We'll okay, yeah. um, feel free to email the email address on our screen, contact.us, yeah, and we will um, have the appropriate person follow up on that. Um, some similar questions about data going from Docker into QuickBooks. So um, someone's kind of asking a clarification. So Docker um, puts the metadata in a CSV and then you use the QuickBooks import tool using its tools to get it in there? Uh, generally speaking, yes. So if you're using QuickBooks, the on-premise solution, there's an import utility that allows you to import all kinds of things because obviously it's easier to talk to it. Um, in the online version, there is some import functionality, but when it comes to creating a bill, 
um, you have to work with a utility that'll do that upload or something that can receive the handoff that we're giving it. Um, so we can send any information you want that's in our database anywhere outside of our database to be imported into any other application. So the quick answer is um, you can do it on both, but we got to see what you're trying to do to, to find the best solution for that for you. Okay, great. Um, we do have a few more minutes for questions, so feel free to pop them in. Um, let's see, next question is, um, can you restrict or customize who can access, you know, different invoices or documents in document? Well, boy, can you. <laughs> so document has a lot of layers to security. So you can restrict who can see what filing cabinets at a very general level, but you can also restrict down to who can do what. And if documents meet certain criteria, who can actually see them? The security permissions in the system are very granular and it is designed with compliance and security in mind. So the quick answer to that is absolutely. We can for sure do that. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, so that's good that even though you can have like anywhere, um, anytime access, you still want to have some control of who's viewing and editing certain documents. Yeah, and you, and you have the full control over who's doing mm -hmm. things with the documents, but you also have a full audit trail. So even when people are doing what they're supposed to be doing with documents, you can see who did what, when, and how on those documents. So there's not just security, there's complete end-to-end -end auditing on every little action that happens on a document. Got it, got it. All right, let's see. Um, um, next question, can Docker look up information like index data from QuickBooks to populate missing data on non-invoice documents related to known companies? Uh, yeah, we can, we can do that. Um, so, you know, a lot of it depends upon, you know, versions and what you're running and if it's cloud or on-premise. But there are multiple ways to get data out of QuickBooks in order for us to do a lookup in it. And it's the same with any line of business application. As long as we're giving access to the data, either through an export from their system or a, or a direct lookup, uh, we, can, we can do lookups. It's just simple ODBC kind of stuff. Um, I think it might be a similar question. Um, can you index in Docker one click to populate fields in QuickBooks? Um, you can index data in DocuWare, and then through the export utility, we can send it to QuickBooks. We won't do any direct indexing in QuickBooks, but we can definitely send the data through an export file. Okay. After clicking that indexing in DocuWare. Got it. All right, look, we have one more question, then we'll close out. Um, can you part match against a PO? Um, the, you can. So that's more of a process consideration than it is a functionality consideration. Um, so if you, if you're, part matching a PO or you're showing it, you know, it was only partially received, that is a status in the database that will get assigned either through a workflow or by the user while they're interacting with the document. Um, so we can walk through that with you offline and, and figure out how deep you need to go with that so we can get that done for you. So yeah, for sure. All right, great. Looks like that's all the questions we have. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, again, on your screen, you can see the various ways to take the next step after this webinar. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, definitely reach out to your partner or you can email us and we'll, you know, happily answer them as soon as possible. So again, what you saw today, you know, use your current setup. We won't, we don't want to change it. We just want to make it better. Add that centralized, secure document access, the email integrations, automated workflows, and more. So um, we appreciate your time. Look out for an email later today with all of these assets. And we hope to see you on our next webinar, which actually will be um, this 26 on electronic forms. So watch out for an invitation on that. All right, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great thanks, day. Sarah. Bye.